Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Tracksman44 here. You, there's a lot of you, a lot of you guys out there, I think, that are searching around looking for buzz saws. You can find them in the doggone places. You'd be surprised if you live rurally how many people like myself out in the country has got one or two of these things sitting off in the back of the lot. Guys like me definitely use them a lot. I've got several more that I've actually got to get back together and, and get in operation. But I never say no when I get an opportunity to come up with another one. So fast forward the conversation to what I've got right here behind me. You see that green thing behind me? A green blade. This is kind of a unique little deal here. Now I've got an Oliver 70 that has been sitting in the shed. I hadn't rolled a wheel for at least 30 years. It run good. It ran really, really good. It's got a little weak valves and stuff like that, you know, kind of stick a little bit. But the tractor itself ran pretty good. Oliver 70s are unique the way they mount their cultivators. There's holes in the actual cast frame and there's round pipes that go through those holes that support your cultivators and your cultivator lift and everything. So somebody, some enterprising gentleman years ago took a buzzsaw. It's not made for an Oliver 70 in its original form. That old boy took an old buzzsaw, cut it apart, and he fitted it to his Oliver 70. Now the fit and finish isn't anything to be real proud of, but the good thing about it, it's got a set of good bearings. It's got a good arbor, it's got a good blade, even though it's small, it's a 28 inch blade. It's got everything good on it. I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you how he fitted it to that Oliver cultivator mount. Now, it kind of gave me a little bit of an idea to get the old Oliver 70 out, get him freshened up a little bit, you know, because it has been a long time since that old gal's been running. But if I did, I'd have to take this thing completely apart and build everything all new, I think. But let's take a look at it. Like I said, you never know who's got these things sitting in the back of their property, you know, especially if it's a, a rural area. And just ask around. You can ask, you know, people, friends, whatever, if they know any old timers like me, you know, out in the country that might have something for sale. You'd be surprised how many times, you know, guys like me get a few years on you and decide, dang it, you know, I'm not ever going to get to it. And if the right guy comes along, boom, you just sell something. You know what I mean? And so that's what you got to do. This one here, believe it or not, has been promised to me for years and years. I just never had the opportunity to go and get it. But it was over at my much older brother's house. And I was over there this morning getting some other stuff. And he went ahead and loaded this up for me. And one other thing, another bonus. Here's another arbor. Now, this is about an inch and three-eighths arbor. It's got an, an old bearing bearing on here. That's an actual ball bearing bearing. But on this end here, if you look real close, you can see that's an actual Babbitt pour. Babbitt's kind of a unique, it's a, it's a mixture of antimony and tin, I think. I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. I can't remember. This thing actually was stuck, but I worked it back and forth a little bit and both bearings are free, but I'm not going to score them up too bad. I'm going to go ahead and change the zerk fittings and uh, go ahead and pump a little bit of fresh grease in and kind of roll those around and make them work. But anyway, as a sidebar here, if you take a look, here's your, here's your arbor and the flat belt. And then of course the, the flat belt drive. And then this is a guard up here that has made the set on this little bitty piece of angle iron right here or set on a tractor frame and then protect the top of the, you know, the, the belt keeps somebody from getting into the belt. And then this long, gray piece here will slide right down alongside the frame but here's the cool thing about it if you know how the cultivators mount on all over 70 it's got that pipe to it well here's two and a half inch pipe right here it's a thin wall pipe here and then over there this will line up with the cultivator mounts on the tractor and then you slip a piece of pipe all the way through to couple this right onto the front end of the tractor so at that point it becomes fairly stable on the front end of the tractor and then I have to assume that a couple of these bolt holes here align to somewhere else on that framework or on something you add to the framework to hold it securely. And like I said, this is a ball bearing arbor and the blade's been kind of boogered. Uh, the blade is really, really rough. It looks like it's been serviced with an angle grinder. Look how, how deep this gullet is, how deep this gullet is here and how odd that is right there. I mean, this teeth are way off kilter, you know, or out of kilter, or very badly shaped. It's going to take a little gumming and a little servicing in order to bring this, uh, bring this blade back, back to health. And this is definitely a cross-cut saw blade, but it is 28 inches in diameter. The nut's in real good shape. So many times guys use pipe wrenches and everything, and uh, they, they're all boogered up. And of course, they've got a real substantial base on it here. There are three basic types of saws. There's a slide top, which is what this is right here, where you actually rest the wood on here and you physically slide it across the surface and into and through the blade. Then you've got a tilt top, which is the type, the style that I use. And then another style is similar to a slide top that is also sometimes called a slide top, but it's a roller top to where you actually have a 
a recessed set of bearings on a frame and this whole portion up here, the table, is mounted on a set of rollers and you literally roll it backwards and forward with your piece of wood on here to and through the arbor. So that's a true roller top. The true roller tops are a little more difficult because the the off fall debris, sawdust and stuff kind of has a tendency to get into the rollers. You have a little bit of a problem keeping those clean. But of all of them, this slide top right here is the most difficult to use. Because if you stop and think, you're back here 18, 20 inches away from the blade. You've got to extend yourself all the way up here and then through on like an 8 or a 9 inch piece. You're way off balance. You're way out of, out of it's just not cool. So if I put this on my old 70, I'm going to do some, uh, some renovation work to it. Just an angle from uh, uphill here. There's the other side of the mount right there. And of course the belt guard and then the belt pulley and a little better view of that slide top. Like I say, you can see how awkward that would be to, uh, to reach out, stretch out over the top of that and push a big heavy uh, six foot long piece of nine inch material right through that blade. I think what I have here is an appropriate resting place uh, for this old buzzsaw for just a little while. The wheels there is a, a set of trucks, part of a set of trucks for an old Fairbanks and Morris 15 horsepower one cylinder, one cylinder engine, the old flywheel engine. And this framework here is actually, and the other end is the, uh, the full set of Fairbanks Morris 15 horsepower trucks. Trucks is what they call the mobile four wheel cart that uh, those one cylinder engines would be on. Resting on the back side is the head block off another old sawmill. It's just staying up out of, the, out of the ground here. But I'm gonna go ahead and settle this down right here just to keep everything out of the, out of the debris, out of the dirt, and uh, put some blocks underneath that blade and arbor. Well, you know, I told you this was an appropriate resting place to set this for a little while, uh, simply because this 15 horsepower Fairbanks and Mars set of trucks is what I plan on repairing and placing my five horsepower Galloway from 1909 on this set of trucks, uh, the new and improved trucks. Uh, I bought that from the grandson of the original owner. The old man back whenever he bought that Galloway had had a little feed grinding business, a little store slash feed grinding slash mercantile business. And he would custom grind on the, with that Galloway, he would custom grind grain for people in the community, as well as buzz saw a little bit of wood. And so that's what that Galloway five horsepower originally was set up for. This is a set of 15 horsepower Fairbanks Morris trucks from out on the farm whenever I was a kid, since before I was a kid. And they're rotted down pretty bad. I've got the bolster, I've got all the parts and pieces to, to rebuild, but I intend on, fully intend on putting that Galloway on this and firing a buzz saw with it. So uh, this is an appropriate place to set that buzz, fall, buzz saw for a while. Whether or not that's the buzz saw that is powered by the Galloway on this right here remains to be seen, but at least it's a good place to rest it for a while. Well, I guess I better bring the story full circle. When I first started the video, I said, you know, that there's a lot of, that I know there's a lot of you people out there, you know, a lot of viewers that are looking for the old buzz saws. And the point of the story is, and I need to go back to it, there's old members in everybody's community. There's, there's old timers out there don't be afraid to just stop in, you know, talk to them, you know. Uh, a lot of times those guys, you know, kind of like myself, I don't mind people stopping by and giving them a little visit, asking about the old equipment, you know. A lot of people don't even understand uh, some of the machinery, you know, that we, that we have around here that we use every day. The point being, you know, if you know somebody, some old timer, whatever, stop by and talk to him. See if he happens to have an old buzz saw or know somebody, you know, some relative or, or somebody in the community that might have an old buzz saw. And uh, you'd be surprised, you know. Uh, so many guys do not use them anymore. They are very 
sought after to a certain extent within a certain wood processing portion of the community. That being guys like us that just enjoy the old stuff, uh, have an appreciation for the old things, and just like doing things the way we want to do them. So don't be afraid. If you know somebody in the community, some old timer, stop by and talk to him about his old equipment and find out he happens to have a buzz saw. Just like me. Do you think I'm going to use all this stuff I got sitting around here? Ain't no way I'd have to live three lifetimes if I never brought another piece out here to get all this stuff used up. So, you know, the right time, the right guy stops by, wants the right thing, by golly, it's gone. So, uh, and a lot of us guys are just exactly like that, you know what I mean? So, at any rate, that all having been said, this is Tracker Man 44. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I am out of here, guys.